Mark's vision for the future looks a lot like the past, before the Industrial Revolution, before oil, as it will be tomorrow. Apart from renewable technologies, innovations and of course the internet, which has allowed us to connect as one global eco-village network, maybe tomorrow we'll even find the promised land in the 42% of Earth's surface, which is dryland. Because if we advocate permaculture, then we can already see that it's turning the desert green in Jordan and providing the local community with fresh organic food. Hopefully we'll be able to see green roofs, green walls and green sidewalks tomorrow to support the biodiversity needed for honeybees and other companion species upon which we are also interdependent. In rural areas we will see housing constructed as it was traditionally from materials found around the site rather than cement brought in in fossil fueled vehicles. Communities can now be truly sustainable and resilient by producing their own green electricity on site. We'll see an awful lot more oxen blocking up the uh, rural roads. Streetlights will be off-grid, powered by solar and wind energy, and people will be able to stay in yurts whilst they're looking after the woodland in participatory ecotourism. Homeless people can live in adapted shipping freight containers like these by housing justice organisation, and people will be able to help the local landowners to produce organic produce and food. Renewable power stations will stand proudly against the landscape everywhere and Eco Village will support Eco Village to build their own eco homes. We won't eat so much meat tomorrow. There won't actually be any organic waste and we'll capture most of the methane to convert to hydrogen which in coastal areas will be able to diversify the fishing industry, supporting ecotourism by offering alternative travel plans. People will need to be a bit more fluid now and move a lot more, especially in the coastal areas, on rollback schemes that will save a lot of investment money. Eco hamlets and eco villages work just as well on board ships with anaerobic digesters, solar panels, etc. Ecotourism will regenerate the revenue in rural and, e and, and coastal areas and give people the opportunity of staying in traditional housing too. Communities will sell organic manure, organic liquid fertiliser and spirulina and green electricity back to the grid to power trains and trams and cities and towns. The countryside will be an awful lot more diverse. It won't be a mono system anymore. And people will have locally produced wine, mead, cider, supporting local inns and hostelries, which will have to move in turn away from the edge. Be moved onto ships, potentially. Community buildings, community hubs, libraries, all covered in greenery and producing their own power, slashing overhead. Geodescent domes, community centres, houses, you can move in flood zones, hydrogen to stop along the way and deposit your own organic things. You'll be able to stay as long as you want or need on any eco-resort and travel by all forms of alternative travel plans. People will build their own homes by hand. They'll be handcrafted and sculpted for build code 6, which is the highest achievable level of building, using waste wherever possible and creating art. Canoes and kayaks connecting eco-resorts wherever there is water. Although Winters are going to get far more extreme, so sometimes we'll have to stay put. Hand dyed naturally, locally, to order clothing as people wish. Selling surplus organic, community made foods and produce. 
providing safe places for eco-tourists to stay. Longboats going up and down the waterways, cleaning them as they go, taking goods and eco-tourists. Cityscapes changed dramatically through hydroponics, bicycle hire nationally connected via a grid of eco-hamlets and eco-villages like kickstart schemes offering employment locally, supporting the alternative travel plan, livery yards, horses and carts, taking people right into the heart of the countryside without using any fossil fuels whatsoever. Eco-resorts with eco-festivals, raising funds for community building with live music events showing and telling what is available and showing the designs of people like architect Michael Reynolds who builds and designs earthships. Wind walls won't just be viewed but they'll be used again and where civilization meets rural countryside there should be no more damage to the countryside. We can connect by our sailboats like the Albatross at Wells Harbour Captain Tom thought it would a, be a great idea to take eco-tourists and produce in Norfolk round the coast. Large-scale wind turbines, but small-scale too. All sorts of naturally built housing. Adobe absorbs CO2 from the atmosphere, as does most other forms of natural building. Inviting places to stop for a while. Growing food indoors in readiness in case solar winter should ever hit the children and living in conservation, which is build code 6. Earthships use old tiles crammed with earth. Earthships brighten in Fife and New Mexico desert. Handcrafted, hand sculpted and all unique housing with a locally made renewable generators, creating industry, water harvested in all means possible including desalination and anaerobic digestion. It's a green economy we all need right now for the sake of the children, for the storm that may hit them if we don't. This is one giant caring community connected and interconnected by a community news, newspapers, TV, radio and the internet via the directory of our 